the mind. For as long as we've known that it exists, we have tried to tap into its fullest potential. Hello everybody, welcome to episode number 26 of the Game Changers podcast. My name is Quinn Sejis and it's a pleasure to be here with you as always. Episode number 26 features a young man who has cognitive development at heart, that is mind development. His name is Kevin Mather and the privilege is mine to introduce him to you. Hello Kevin, you know I always say that I love having light minds on this podcast because it, it it makes the conversation flow easier and also sometimes I even get new perspectives on ideas that I had. So I am happy to have you on. I'm happy that you decide to to have me on your show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for for having me here. For sure, for sure. Okay, let's begin with introductions. Tell people a little bit about yourselves. Well, my name is Kevin Mafre. I am a, a teacher and I have published uh, two books uh, titled The First One That I Published Took Me Three Years to Write um, Purpose Driven, The Meaning of Life is Found in the Purpose to Live. And I formulated it into a, a way that young people can understand it. There was a, a famous thinker who said, if you cannot explain something to a six-year-old, you don't, you don't understand it yourself. So I wrote right. a book for st- smaller children. It's called Giant Magical Pants. So it's a formulation of the same uh, idea for the adults to the children. Uh, and I have both of those books on Amazon. Uh, and I'm getting really good reviews on those books. I'm also the, the founder of an organization called, well, Life Org. Where we it's it's all it's, it's based on the same book purpose driven where we where we help uh, where we help persons to find purpose in life and we we, we use the the, the the creativity to solve uh, complex problems in the social with the social consciousness that we're in the stakeholders capitalism so we teach them how to think uh, associative structure thinking where you think based on what is good for you what is good for the society what is good for your family what is good for the environment and you take up a, a, a domain and you find a, a, a solution to a problem and you build a business out of it. So that's one of the things that I'm doing as well. Nice. Nice. Now I know that there's a term that encapsulates what you're trying to achieve or trying to, um, how do I say it? trying to promote and i know that term is cognitive development now tell us what that is first of all and why is it so important well well, basically it's a it's a educational jargon a jargon is phrases that we use in different professions so it's something that educators use and educators are supposed to know and basically it's the and I learned that partly because I, I love reading. Um, Je Piaget, I think persons who have heard me speak know that I speak a lot about Je Piaget because he was, a, he, he was an educational psychologist. And basically, he, he, he developed information based on gene behavior, how your, genet- how your genetics can affect the way you think. And basically, cognitive development is helping persons think Helping persons develop the thinking structure, how you can think, because thinking is something that is that is uh, that differentiates us from from the different life force on the planet. Human beings have the ability to think of the present, think on the past, and project the consciousness into the future and formulate ideas. So the ability to do that is very very important, and that's what we try our best to teach the children at school to develop the intellect, so to speak, the ability to solve abstract problems and to apply it into the world. So cognitive development, it has to do with cognition. Cognition has to do with the mind, the brain. The ability to use the activity of the brain to then to then influence your, your physical and reality itself. Beautiful. So cognitive development is basically mind and brain development from what you say. Basically. Okay. Alright, so we have spoken to what it is 
and why it's important. But why did you, in particular, choose this as a a field of study? So I can I can go back on why is it important. It's important because it, because the 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 development of a state or the development of an organization is heavily based on the, the, the development of the individual. And if the individual is not developed mentally, the individual cannot be developed physically because we are both mental and physical beings. So in order for us to have a, a, a thriving economic state, we need to have persons who are, who, who are productive and productivity comes from having the right mindset. And that's where cognitive development, why it is important and why we spend uh, a lot of time trying to achieve that amount of, 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 of brain power because we need to solve complex problems in an ever-changing world. So why did I choose it? I choose it because of my own experience, because your experience have to do, your decisions have to do with your experience, all of it. So how I experience the world and, and what I see that is, that it was lacking within my environment, within the space that I grew up in. And, and the mindset of the the, the 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 people that I was around and that influenced my mindset that I had to go on a journey to change my mindset and I got a brilliant opportunity. I mean, I was God sent to have to study to become a teacher and teaching and teach you a lot about yourself and how you think and how to develop your intellect. And I just fell in love with that and I'm still a teacher and I, I just pursued that line of of, of that career path. Right. I like that. Now we know that cognitive development and any um, mental development, I guess, takes place so largely, not only, but largely in the school system. What element of our school system do you think can be revamped or improved to ensure that cognitive development is the focus and that we will truly achieve um, the heights that we should get to. All right, that, that's, that's, a, that's a fact question, so I'm going to try to one say. Um, yes. Number one, number one, I think, um, we're going based on the, the definition of words right now, which is education, because you mentioned the school system, and the school system is meant to educate our wider population. And the word education, what, what basically does education mean? So I, I looked up the, the etymology, the, the, the origin of the word education, and majority of it has to do with bring out the ability to teach somebody how to think. And one of the ways that, and there's a thin line between teaching somebody what to think and teaching somebody how to think. And we need to learn that. Teaching yes, somebody for sure. Teaching somebody how to think is, is, a, is, a, is a much better approach for a sovereign, independent individual than always telling somebody what to think. And I believe we need to be able to um, draw the lines between the how and the what. That's one of the things that we need to do individually as teachers, teach people how to think. And when you tell it's similar to the saying that they say, teach a man how to fish, and you do not have to give him a fish anymore. So if you teach them how to think properly, I think they will be able to solve the problems that comes within the life. And 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 as as it pertains to 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 the, to the education system, I believe there's a lot of things that that I mean that is out of the hands of the persons on the ground because we are we are on the ground doing what we're supposed to do. And there are still things that is out of the hands of the policymakers. And I think that we both of both of us are trying our best to do the best that we can. And I, I, I really believe that what needs to be done is a, a level of, 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 of understanding itself as it pertains to why education is important to the wider civilization and why belief is important to the wider civilization. So if we have a consciousness of people that, that know that our, what, what education is for and what beliefs are for, I think we would be able to give it more we we'll give it more. Pri- we we'll give it more priority. We we'll give it. We we'll put it higher on our priority list as a nation, and as a people, and as individuals. How do we achieve that, though? How how do we teach people how to think? Basically, the the main and that's a that's a that's a that's a searching question. The main reason why thinking is is important is because it influences our our, our belief. So you need to find out 
how important is your belief as an individual? And somebody might say, oh my God, I, I don't believe in anything. I, I don't have a belief system. I don't have a, a framework on which I interpret the world. Anybody who is alive today has a framework on which they interpret the world. They have a belief system, whether or not they are consciously aware of it. It acts on them unconsciously. So, so the, 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 the question that, that, that you're asking, how do we teach people to think? I think we have to teach people how thinking, the patterns of thinking takes place. And, and even um, 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 Jean Piaget, he had his four, he had his four stages of, of cognitive development where, where you have the sensory motor, you, uh, you have the sensory motor, you have um, the pre-operational stage, you have the concrete operational stage and the formal operational stage. In every stage, he's saying that children develop through those stages at different ages. And, 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 and so you have some characteristics of the sensory operational stage where, where, where children go based on the senses, what they see. You have a little child, the child only interact with the world based on the physical touches. And you, as they grow up, they're, they're developing the cognitive, they're developing the intellect, the ability to think differently. But as you grow up to be a mature individual, there's something called the concrete operational stage. And in that area, the people now have to learn how to differentiate between abstract imaginative thinking and thinking that is within the, 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 the that is that is substantial that is in the real that is reality and that's right. one of the difficult that's one of the difficult problems we have to differentiate whether or not our thinking patterns are imaginative and whether or not it's empirical and and the way you teach people how to do that is is to have them to look at the experiences and take the experiences along with the with the outer world and that's what i'm trying to teach associational structure thinking what you what is true for you biologically what is true for you psychologically what is true for you sociologically what is true for you on an economic level so if you that's that's the idea of principles right so if something is true in the biological domain it must be true in the in the civilized it must be true to civilization uh, for example um i read this book um um, from from this guy Joseph Murphy, and I think it's Joseph Murphy or Napoleon Hill. And he said, and I think he quoted that from the Bible when he said, "As a man thinketh in his mind, he becomes." So is he? But in biology, that's Napoleon Hill. Yeah, and he, but, yeah, yeah. But but in biology, they're showing you that there's something called neuroplasticity, and neuroplasticity can see itself in one of Ben Carson's book that I, I read when he was talking about gifted hands. He was saying that he was a brain, he was a neurosurgeon. And what he what he found the cure to was epilepsy, something like that. And he cut off part of he cut part of the brain of the individual. But the function that was in that brain, it took itself into another part of the brain. So basically, basically neuroplasticity is saying your mind is almost like it's not it's not only bounded by the structure of the brain because it can change the neuro firing can change to go to other places. So based on the environment you are in, based on the places that you are in, you based on what you put your focus on, your mind would be able to adapt and the neuro that's why it's called neuroplasticity. It's able right. to be adapted to and that's what human beings are wonderful for. We are what we are very adaptive. So 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 basically we, we have to understand the, the ability to think it must be grounded in if you're coming up with something it must be grounded in things that are true because sometimes you hear persons make policies and the policies are not are not substantial in any way they have no basis for what they say it's not grounded in any real landscape we're just thinking abstractly but the abstraction is not grounded on in reality so we, we're trying to join like what i'm trying to do is join the abstraction with true so I think that's how persons have to learn how to think if we have to move forward in this ever-changing technological world, information world as well. Game Changers proudly supports Kids Health Creative, a publishing house encouraging children ages 4 to 12 to live healthy lifestyles all while having good clean fun. Get their latest book, Be Smart, at 10% off when you use promo code QUEENST at checkout. That's Q U I 
A-N-N-S-T at checkout. Get yours today. Hello, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the episode. This episode was made possible through a platform called Riverside FM. It's a platform that I've grown to love and it really does justice to creators. Unlike Zoom or other platforms, it records content locally and then uploads it to the cloud so you have a seamless video. If you are a creator and looking to get into this space, this is the platform for you. Click the link down below to get started today. Have you gotten your official Game Changers merch yet? If not, what are you waiting for? Get yourself a hip, trendy t-shirt or hoodie that is sure to turn heads. T-shirts only cost $55 EC and hoodies go for $120 EC. Highlight your inner Game Changer. Get yours today. I'm trying to think now why it is that Kevin Maffre thinks how he thinks or, or what influenced you to get into this position because I mean you said why you started but I wouldn't now like to understand your background what parts maybe in your childhood or in your education helped you or informed your choice to go into this field. So take me back in history. Tell me what about your background brought you here. So basically, basically I, I, I was, oh well, I attended Buford Comprehensive School and I was very interested in, in, in sports. I was, I was an athlete. I, well, I still do play. But the time that I was playing basketball, I, I really put a lot of energy and effort in playing basketball. Uh, and I, I, I was, you know, for at that time I was tall, so it was easy for me to consider myself to be good. So I could have scored easy points over the short persons. And I right. decided that's something that's nice that I, I wanted to pursue when I trained very hard at it. I, I traveled the Winwood Islands playing basketball with the Islands team. Oh. I went to Cleveland and I had many wonderful experiences there. I traveled many different places playing basketball, and I, I decided to pursue it further into finding a scholarship to study. And that didn't happen. That fell through the cracks, and I realized that 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 there's nothing else because because I had an aim all the time that I had the aim working towards getting a basketball scholarship. I I felt that my life was a lot better. I was I was living life. I wasn't. I was very disciplined because of the, the aim that I had, the aim that I have. And reflecting on it, I realized that aim gave my life meaning because I wasn't partaking in any um, violence. I wasn't partaking in any drinking. I wasn't partaking in any of the social norms that persons nowadays would deem bad. I wasn't partaking in any of that because I know I had an aim. I know what I wanted to do. And I, I went to bed early. I was up early to go and train. I didn't have any... Um, all the persons tell me what to do to be successful. So because I knew exactly what I wanted, I decided to be able to do what's necessary to get there. And when after my, I got an opportunity to get a scholarship, and after the scholarship fell through, I no longer had that aim. But I no longer had that aim. Although I, be, I was a, a working adult at the time I became a, a teacher, um, uh, I no longer had that aim, even though I was making more money than I was making than when I was playing basketball. But life just felt empty. Life just felt meaningless. And I was participating in, 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 in hedonistic behaviors based on alcohol, all those things. All the things that you could think about that young persons in society would be taking part in. Because I lost my aim, even though I, I was making, um, I, was, I had a job and, and the job didn't define as high as my aim was, I felt into, you know, what you call existential crisis. And right. Then I, I, I realized that I was like, when I was playing basketball, I felt a lot more fulfilled, not happy. I felt a lot more fulfilled. 
But now that I'm working, I'm I was employed, that I, I don't know what I'm about, I'm lost. And I decided to watch myself and to try to to re-specify an aim that is higher so that I could experience that fulfillment again. And one of the things that I found that why something is happening to you when I look around, I realize that same thing is happening to a lot of young persons right here with it, the, the community that I was raised in. And I realized, why not try to tell them about your experience that you are very aware of? Because they're almost going through the same thing. Because, and even Viktor Frankl, who said something like that, Victor Frankl, one of the favorite books that I've read, he said, he, the, 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 book, the name of the book is Man's Search for Meaning. And he said that if an individual doesn't have meaning in life, he falls to, to, to the will to pleasure. He, he doesn't specify his life meaningfully. The other thing that he would do is, is the, the, the desire for pleasure. And we see that a lot in our society, the, de- the desire for pleasure, and power, and all those things, because we don't have a meaningful aim. So when I realized that, I was like, oh, well, it's interesting that I, I could see something like that. So I decided to write the book and to try to talk to persons about having meaning in life. And meaning in life is specified based on how you think about your 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 experience in life. Well, you know, I that, that part of the interview is always interesting to me. Because I need to understand your why. And understanding your why, I really understand where your passion comes from. I find that often, you know, passion and, and purpose come from disappointment. You know, um, the Bible says that all things work together for good, right? It's not that all things are good, but all things work together for good. I'm seeing that your, your disappointment in basketball informed you know your purpose in life so i like that would you agree with that yes totally i think i think that's that's a nice way to 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 say it and there's a lesson in there for any young person or any person listen you know you may be disappointed right now use this time to find why you exist on this earth and find your purpose Beautiful. Okay. So, Kevin, you said a while ago that you are an author. Okay. So, take us into your books. Get more specific. What are each of the two books about? Basically, the first book, like I said, when I had that uh, realization, I decided, okay, um, why not? And that time I was, I, I think I was heavily influenced by the, the authors that I used to, I used to read. Because when I left Teachers College, I was really interested in, in, in psychology and, and, and uh, uh, human behavior and all, and all of that. And I, I, I read a lot of spiritual books as well. Miles Monroe, I read a lot of different things like that. So that helped frame my, my the way that I interpreted the problem that I was facing. So and a lot of the books that I read, it came across as very complex. It was very, very complex. So I, I, took, I took a lot of time to read it. I used to read, I had a phone at the time, and I used to have the phone by me. And while I read, I used to research the definition of words. And I used to, right. like, if you research a definition of a word, there is a word inside that definition that you don't know. So you have to now right. research the definition of, the definition of that definition. So it it's a rabbit hole. deeper into it. It's a rabbit hole. It deep, deep, deep opens a lot of concepts. Like, and sometimes when I speak to persons, like, I don't realize that I use certain words that they don't understand. So it's almost like they don't understand what I'm saying. But it's not something I try to do consciously. Like I read so much text. Like I just understand it that well. So I, I decided that, okay, why those books are so complex? I think I can, I can simplify it for persons that don't have so much time to read. You read no persons don't like to read, number one. And to read such difficult text, so I spend a lot of time uh, putting the the first book together called Purpose Driven. The meaning of life is found in the purpose to live. And basically, what I'm saying here is the same problem that I faced. Um, having a valuable aim in life is important for psychological development, or having a, a valuable aim in life is important for cognitive development. You can say the same thing. So, and, and the definition of valuable when I describe it in aim 
is saying that something that you do, like I said earlier, that is important to you, beneficial, not just important, beneficial to you, and something that is beneficial to your family, something that is beneficial to your community, something that is beneficial to your society, something that is beneficial to the environment and to your culture. So you have a small window to thinking. You're not thinking about everything. You specify your, your aims. And even the Bible said that. It said straight and narrow is the truth that leads to life. So you don't look at everything. You look at what is beneficial to your life. Like if you know what's beneficial to your life, there's a lot of things that you already, you, you, you will not do. Like if you say, okay, what is beneficial to my life and my family? There's a lot, there's a lot of things that you have to put on the side. So you're going to say, okay, if what is beneficial to me, my family, and my community, you get a lot of things you have to put on the side. Then you go far back and say, what is beneficial to my, me, my family, my community, my society, my culture, you know, the environment, you know? Because we're, we're in an environmental consciousness right now, we're looking at um, 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 conserving the planet. But if you think along those lines, I think there's a lot of things that you'll be more focused. You'll have a, a aim that is specified. And if you know what you're doing, you automatically know what you should not do. And that's what sacrifice is. So you sacrifice the things that you know that you shouldn't do in relation to your aims. And that's what I was trying to act, I was trying to flash out in that book. That's the same idea in the children's book. The children's book is the giant magical pants. And the giant magical pants, I try to bring the same idea. So the idea in that book is that uh, structure is important for cognitive development. Again, cognitive development. If you have structure in your life, the structure is saying that you know what you shouldn't do and what you should do. So in, 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 in our tradition, our tradition uh, symbolizes structure as the father. That's why they call God the father. God is God always tells you what you should and what you shouldn't do. And we could see that in our society. A lot of a lot of homes that do not have that type of structure, whether or not the father is not there, or the home has a father and the home doesn't have structure, you'll find that everything is permitted for the child to do and the child doesn't know what to do and what not to do. And that's where you get the problem, the, the, the problem of crime coming from uh, in, 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 in civilization. And when you look at the school system, and I always say that. The school system, the content is very good. But have you, did you go to um, um, university or did you do university online? So I went to university. Okay, so a lot of the times, like what school is about is, is, is it has to do with the content, but the structure of, of getting early in the morning, getting up early in the morning, especially in the primary school, go by the road, catch the bus, right? You go by the road, you catch the bus, you get to school for a specific time. You get to school for a specific time, you know you have to go in the class at 9.30, where about. You go there at 9.30, you know break is at 10.30. You go. You have your lessons, you know break is at 10.30, you go outside. And you know lunch is at 12. It's all the activities you need to do within that structure of the school. So that structure is almost like the structure in your mind as well. It shows you your boundaries. It shows you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. The content is the activities that takes up your time. The content is important, but the, the, the ability to stay within the structure 80% of the time is what's important. And that's what I try to portray in the, the children's books. Structure for children and adults is important for cognitive development. Beautiful. Yes. So without structure, it's chaos. So 100%. Structure is is one of the most important things. Okay, so where is that material available? So you said it's available on Amazon. Where else is it available? Yeah, I, I have with me as well. I'm getting a well to these dates. I'm I'm getting some more. Um, yeah, I'm getting some more with me. That's purpose driven. But I have giant magical funds with me, and um, both of them are published on Amazon. All right. So let's go into my personal favorite part of the interview, Quick Eaters segment. So Quick Eaters are light-hearted questions that will tell about Kevin the person and could help us understand part of your mindset as well. All right? So these questions are designed to go by very quickly. So answer them as quickly as you can. All right? My first quick hitter question. 
what are your top three books of all time? I know that's a hard question. But think. I have Mind Search for Meaning by, by Victor Frankl. Mm-hmm. I have Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Colby. And I have Hero's Journey by Campbell. Joseph Campbell. All right. Nice. And I know you have a lot more books to put in there. But I know, you know, you are 23. And you did a pretty good job. So, great. Great, great. My next question is a preference question. A question that I ask all my guests. Apple or Android, Kevin? And tell me why. iPhone. Okay. Do you know why? Because I have an iPhone mobile device, <laughs> right. and I have and, and I have a laptop. That's that's and I have a MacBook. I think okay. it's just very. It's just it's just like it's, it's it helps me do a lot more. Um, the the programs that it has. Like I, I'm a, I'm a very I'm a very conservative person. If I get that for the first time, I'm just going to use that. Um, I right. don't know how to use it already, and that's just that's just it. I, I stay with it. Right, right, right. Got you. So you like it because you're used to it. Understand? Used, basically. Simple. Okay, my final quick hitter question. Who would you like to see on Game Changers? I would say, I would say Noah. Noah says. Ah, that's a pretty interesting name. If you know him um, personally, feel free yeah. to give me that link and I'll yeah. definitely have him on. That, yes. that sounds like a uh, a pretty interesting name. I like his content, and I think yeah. he'll make a great guess. For sure, yeah. I like that. Okay. So, we're moving to the back end. The last few questions. I know that cognitive development cannot exist where bad mental health also exists. Tell me the importance of good mental health. Well... I am no professional as it pertains to mental health, but um, something I can say is that uh, when persons are not really aligned with the truth of the experience, there are a lot of things that disrupts your your cell, your body. First of all, when you look at the body, because we as a society we don't take mental health as serious as we 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 supposed to and it is something that is plaguing us and i think we have not developed the awareness to appreciate the fact that one of the most important organs that we have is our brain and you can differentiate the brain from the mind the brain is the organ that house that houses the mind the mind is the activity and if the activity is not performing properly and you need to know what do you mean by properly as it relates to the mind and I, I think I read this somewhere when it says mental, uh, mental health is based on how you can interact properly with your social environment. Because if you're doing something that's not right, persons will let you know that you, you, you're, not doing some, you, you're, not, you're not aligned with what's right. And sometimes the norm can be almost, the, or the norm can be bad altogether. But to what degree do you think that the society is bad altogether based on you as an individual so mental health is not something that you look at yourself only to diagnose you look at mental health yourself in relation to your environment because if you are not properly fitted in the social landscape and you cannot see that you're not properly fitted in the social landscape and you have no idea that you are not fitted in the social landscape that is something that you're missing. The activity of the mind is not well aligned with the relation of the society. So like I said, I'm no um, I'm, I'm professional, but I, I see persons around the place. And, and if you don't look at it, if we have somebody go to a therapist, like like to, to, to speak and to, to, because they're trying to get their mental health going, like we almost look at it like it's a, it's, 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 it's a taboo thing. It's something to, to joke about. And we, we don't take counseling seriously. We don't take, therapy seriously we don't take 
it's like we have we, we have two spectrums either you okay or you mad i think there's nothing wrong with you it's not yeah that's two spectrums that we have the minute you hear somebody go to the wellness center to to, to, the, to the mental institute like oh they're the person mad it's not it's not that the person mad probably the person the way the person experience in the world or the emotional state to the physical state is too unbearable for them so mental health is something especially the mental health of of men men mental health we have a lot of mad men in the place we have more mad men than mad women a lot of men just lose it and we have to ask ourselves why but go ahead yeah for sure and you know um being i guess sensitive to these cyber situations i think would help improve us us as a society you know but it's a process like everything else all right so kevin tell us how we can get in contact with you well, i have a uh, i have my social media platform i have um, instagram which is um, kevin marfre notes that's where i post some of the things some of the content that i create um, I also have a YouTube channel, uh, Kevin Marfa podcast, where I meet with different persons and have interesting conversations, different professionals, intellectuals uh, across the Caribbean and sometimes um, uh, Latin America and all those places. And we talk about development and human development. And if there is an objective mode of um, seeing the world of, of objective things that you must do to develop, I have that on my YouTube um, podcasting. I also have my Instagram, my, like I said, my Instagram. I have my Facebook page, Kevin Maffer, and I have my Insta, my um, Life Org institution as well. So you can send me a message on either one of those platforms, and 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 we could we could take it we could take it from there. Lovely. I will definitely, as usual, leave the links down below, so people can get connected with you. All right, Kevin, it was a pleasure speaking to you. You know, when I learn from my guests, I really enjoy it. And I have definitely learned, and I would definitely go back and listen to this again and learn a lot more. Thank you for all you do. And I look forward to even being on your podcast sometime in the future. Happy to have you here, man. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for your line of questioning. I think you really do have something going on here and I would like you to keep pushing forward from strength to strength. Thank you for the interview. Okay, guys. This has been episode number 26 of the Game Changers podcast. I look forward to hearing your comments and hearing from you based on this questioning and based on this interview. And I look forward to getting you guys thumbs up and general interaction. Remember to like and subscribe, guys. Your subscription means a lot. And it helps grow the channel. And the bigger the channel gets, the better our guests get. So, remember to like and subscribe. And remember to follow us on all platforms. We are on Spotify. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys. This has been yet another episode of Game Changers. Thank you for coming on, and I look forward to seeing you next time. As always, stay hungry. Bye-bye.